<clears throat> hey there, Don. How you doing, buddy? Hey, everybody. Welcome to LT Outdoors Sunday Night Live. Um, I appreciate everybody getting on here. I am going to share this real quick on Facebook. Hope you guys all had a happy Easter. User opted out of platform. This action attempted is disallowed because the user has opted out of... Okay, well, yeah, share on Facebook, I guess. So, <laughs> not sure what's up with that. But, hey, Lisa, how you doing? Tell my puppy dog I said hi. <laughs> hey there, Bill. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Rob. I hope you guys are all having a good week. Hey, Neil. <laughs> good, I'm glad you're doing good, Lisa. Hey there, John. <laughs> Brat. Oh. Uh, hey, John, how you doing, buddy? Say hi to everybody. Oh, you got your chicken little in your mouth. Turd. Hey there, Mike. How you doing, buddy? Thank you, sis. <laughs> yeah, I had to I had to get the haircut. It was getting to getting to be too much. I had like a rat tail on the back that was just always tickling my back and driving me crazy. So hey there, Dave. How you doing, buddy? Easter. Um Things have been a little tough again this week, you know, especially having more again this week on Wednesday. So hoping this week, though, once hopefully the truck can be fixed and done with and hopefully trustworthy. So tonight I will have three auctions going on and all the proceeds will go towards fixing the truck. So I'm hoping it's going to be good because I've got plans. If you've seen the thumbnail tonight, it was a camping thumbnail. Uh, my plans are to start taking the uh, truck out with the dogs and going around the state, camping a few days here and there, and getting myself into new um, locations, new bait shops around different parts of the state. So, hey, Rick, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> hey, Lisa says, hey, Jammers. Hey, Jamma. <laughs> uh, hey, Barry, how you doing, buddy? Oh, there you go, John. Nice. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, Mike. That sounds like fun, man. Rick says, hey, jammers. <laughs> uh, she's such a big baby. Hey there, Kiss Our Bass. How you doing? <laughs> oh, let's see. Small Michigan Fishing YouTube channel trying to grow on any tips. Um, Man, as far as tips go... You know, it, YouTube is very hard to explain, and I don't even understand it because really, I, I don't think I'm even growing as as fast as I should be. Not, you know, I put a lot of work into it for for all I do, and I really don't grow that much. But um, the best thing that I can tell you is to watch on your titles. Uh, it does make a big difference because, you know, when I first started, I would type in, you know, awesome bluegill fishing or um, bluegill bonanza, something that I thought was cool and pop. But what you got to remember in the back of your mind is it, what matters most is what people are actually typing in on YouTube. You got to type, you got to make your title something that people are going to actually be searching for. And I see it time and time again from lots of different YouTubers and that's where they get hung up. That's where a lot of the growth stops and slows down, man. You really choose pick and choose your titles that's why i've kind of i guess you could say my titles have gotten lame but it's because that's what people are looking for you know i'll type in bluegill fishing in the spring or michigan bluegill fishing just something that somebody's possibly going to type into youtube rather than some random cool words that they're not going to look for so that is probably my biggest um, tip that i can give you as far as youtube goes it's really the only thing that i've learned also, a nice looking thumbnail I've noticed has helped. Since I started doing those, uh, I have gotten a lot more views too. So, Orange Arctic Spinner. Nice. Hey there, KD. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Dan. <laughs> hey, Paul. Hey, Jessa. How you guys doing? <laughs> awesome. Home from Indiana. I hope you kicked butt today, Jessa. Hey there, Max. <laughs> Oh, tuning in from Japan. I forgot I seen that you went you you ended up going to Japan. I hope you're having fun over there, bro. Hopefully you're getting some bass fishing in while you're that way. You're welcome, Kiss Our Bass. Anytime, man. Anytime. Hey there, Johnny. Thank you. 
Thank you. I appreciate that, Johnny. I try my best, man. I really do. I try. I always try my best. So good place to eat in Oscoda. My favorite in Oscoda is probably the, I know it's a bar, but uh, the Hilltop. If you ask me, the Hilltop has the best burger in town. So yeah, I really like the Hilltop. Using the short format has been getting people more subscribers because YouTube pushes those types of live streams. What do you mean YouTube's like live streams with the short format? How could you possibly do that? Because if, I mean, shorts can only be like a minute long. So how could you, I don't get how that, how that would work, Mike. Hey there, Don, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> I am going to turkey this year, Dan. I got my license the other day, and uh, it's uh, the 20th, the license that starts on the 20th. So, yep, I will be out. Rick's going to be calling for me. So, hey there, Kevin. It was a nice day. It was a really nice day. Oh, geez, that sucks. Yeah, Neil knows. Yep, I'd say Hilltop Burgers. That's my... That's my go-to right there for Oscoda. All right, yeah. Well, when you're in town, man, give them a shot. You'll like them. The Hilltop's got some good food. Oh, cool. That'll be great, Max. Thank you. And I should mention, too, guys, thanks for bringing that up, Max. I am going to be hosting a tournament. Uh, the reason I haven't talked about it a whole lot is because I'm still putting it together. But it's probably going to be the, I'm going to say the second weekend of May. I'm trying to pick a time when it's going to be comfortable weather for everybody. There's going to be a kids tournament as well as an adult tournament. I'm probably going to try and have out yet to look, John. It's too, you know, up here. I don't really start finding them anyway for another maybe two weeks. It's it's still, yeah, they get them downstate this time of year, but our ground up here is a lot colder. Looks just like the short videos, but live. Oh, you know what? I bet what they're doing, I see what you're saying by format. They're probably, I think you're talking about they're going live on their phone because it'll be, you're talking like the tight sideways format. I think people are probably just going live on their phone, which if you ask me, I mean, I don't, I don't see how that would get more views because it's a lazy way to do it. But how you doing, Sunfish? No luck. Well, hopefully, I'm sure you'll do good in Detroit. I've been hearing a lot of stuff from there. So, yeah, it's honestly, John, we're not even starting to get warm until today was our first kind of warmish day. We're going to be getting warm, though, every single day after this. So, I, honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if next weekend I could go out and find some mushrooms up here. So, fishing like the rest of us. <laughs> Ugh, I haven't been out fishing that much myself, but like I said, beginning of the show, guys, my truck is giving me fits again. The bearings are out on the on the back of the truck, so I got to get that fixed on Wednesday. That's been kind of holding me up. Uh, Rick's been driving me around to places and stuff, but you know I don't like to do that. So hopefully, I can get the truck fixed up and be good to go. Um, I do want to say this: big shout out to Rick today. He made me a kayak um, carrier for the back of my truck, and it's pretty dang awesome. And I'll tell you what, it's going to work out very cool because I've I've looked it over. I can, if I get a tarp, a nice tarp, I can use that as a uh, box bed camper too. So I'll put into a camper and instead of using a tent, I think me and Gemma and Ruby can camp right out of the bed of the truck. So getting ready for spring turkey. Yeah, I'll be ready. I'll be ready, you know, for the 20th. Jen was over here with her tail knocking lures off the shelf. 34-inch sturgeon. Man, that would have been fun. Oh, and the Saginaw. Nice. I have been seeing a lot of flatheads down there caught. I told I told Rick they're doing good down there. I got to – it's killing me. I want to go this week, but it, it's all going to depend on if the stupid truck gets fixed. So we shall see. We shall see. Yeah, 
Yep, that's. I mean, we lived in Oscoda. It was cool because we could get them in the yard too. But we don't. Um, we we don't get them up here in Harrisville. I don't see as many as I did in Oscoda, but. Do I think it's good? I think as far as the fish go, Jim, I think it's going to be good for the fish species because obviously when, when you're having less ice, you're not going to have those winter kill-offs like, like we have sometimes when we have the really heavy winters. So it's going to be good as far as not hurting the fish. Um, but as far as, uh, and same with pressure, as, as far as fishing pressure goes, you know, you're not going to be having all that, those people keeping all them fish out of there either. So I think fish populations are going to do a lot better, but, um, yeah, it definitely sucks for us ice fishermen though. But as far as, uh, you know, downstate not having ice as much, there's still no reason to not be out fishing because without ice, you guys could be out hammering the fish on open water. There's no problem. You just got to slow everything down and go smaller with baits. It's the bearings on the back, Mike. I'm hoping it's only the back, but the bearings are bad right now to where it's, it's growling pretty good when I'm driving. So only get puff balls in Texas. Now, if you guys didn't notice already, um, I did post, I don't know how many of you follow it, but I uh, on my metal detecting channel, I did post a new video today on there. Um, me and Rick were out the other day digging, and I did bring a couple of the items here to show you my coolest finds i think this one i thought was very interesting i've never dug anything quite like this um this was a what was it 308 all right this was a 308 bullet casing that somebody had cut off i'm guessing they filled it with lead and they put that, that loop on it so i don't know if they were wanting to use that as a spell but either way i think it is very neat i've into making something cool so i thought that was a just a neat little thing that I dug. Um, also, the other day, and I didn't even tell Rick this today. <sighs> I forgot to tell him when I was over there. But um, I did dig a silver coin while we were at it. We were digging a campground, and I dug a mercury dime, right? Well, it's a 1920, which is actually the oldest mercury dime that I have ever dug in my life. I did not know that, but I it is. I haven't even dug anything from the 20s. My oldest mercury dime to date before that was in the 30s. So I'm pretty pumped about that. But yeah, metal detecting is a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you, Sunfish. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's, um, down, like I said, downstate, what you got to figure, guys, is the ground temp. If you guys are talking morales, ground temp has to be in the 50s you know you need warmer weather so when you stick in the 50s which downstate you guys have been okay if you get temperatures that are sticking around 50s or even higher that's even better it's warming up your your dirt quicker and you're gonna find your mushrooms faster now up here up north we don't usually hit the 50s right until around the end of april you know we're starting to this week but um it's kind of not normal we usually don't get warm until towards the end of april so and even then, we're, we're not even getting warm into April usually. I mean, it's it's not abnormal to be freezing in April up here. So, But we do find a lot of um, our mushrooms are usually towards the end of April up north. And yes, you guys are normally your season's halfway done by the time we start picking them up here. So, yeah, it's way early down there. None in Wisconsin. Yeah, you guys, I'm sure, are too cold too. You, you usually have the temps that I got are even colder. So. Shout out to your mom. Nobuko? Nobuko? Hi, Nobuko. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> oh, I I hope you're having a good day, Nobuko. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she is a big baby, that's for sure. She She's daddy's baby. She always needs... Uh... <laughs> you're welcome, Max. You're welcome. Yep, Mother's Day weekend's always good. Usually, though, see, I think Mother's Day weekend is usually when I start getting into the the whites and the grays. Um, that is usually the best time anyway because they're easier to find. Uh, it's always harder to find those little blacks, and there's they don't get very big. But, uh, yeah, finding um, the blacks in that... 
Did I miss that? I didn't know it was her birthday. Okay, Robin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you got me there for a minute, sis. I felt bad. Yeah, Gem always takes over the show. I wish I could have seen her face, too. Make sure you give her a hug for me, Max. For spending time with her. I would do anything, anything to go back and spend a day with my mother. I really would. I, I would give anything to go back and just spend a day. So I think that is amazing that you are over there in Japan right now spending that time with your mom. I think that is great. So. Yep, yep. The blacks are, yeah, when, when the black morels are up, it is, uh, it, you know, they're hard to find as it is because they're so small. And uh, finding them in the leaflet is just a pain. It's a lot easier to find the whites. But the blacks, as far as Iosco County, Alcona County, um, Alpena County even, we start finding them normally around the open air trout is when we start getting them really good. And that's the last Saturday of April. So uh, I really think that next weekend I could probably start finding a few. But it's not going to heat up and get real good for another couple weeks. So, hey, Mark, how you doing, buddy? Now, Mark McKinley on here, he is a uh, morale pro. Him and his wife, Jen, they it's nothing for them to get a 1,000 morels, and that's just crazy. So thank you very much, Max. Hopefully I get to meet her one day. That would be really cool. When's the spawn going to – what spawn are we talking about, Don? Because all the fish species spawn at different times. Oh, there you go, Bill. That sounds good. Brown's one of my favorites. There's something about them. They're really, really good. Elm trees. Elm trees and, yeah, tulip trees for sure. That's a big thing. Yeah, t uh, tulip trees are, are, I don't know what it is about them, but, um, but it, for the whites usually for me. You know, the whites and the gray morels. Um, even the elms, but as far as the blacks, if you guys are looking for the black morels, you want to look for popples, poplar trees. That's what it is. That's where it's at. You find yourself stands of poplar trees that are small, the young poplars, you're going to find, you're going to find lots of morels. I know I hate the ticks too, and they're out pretty good right now. So bluegill, we got a while for bluegill, buddy. Yeah. They're not going to be spawning. They're usually spawning right around the time that bass are so that's you're looking at you know memorial day right before memorial day weekend so it's going to be a bit now on some of the really shallow lakes if you're fishing a lake that you know only gets up to let's say 10 feet of water they're going to spawn a lot quicker in those lakes because that water temp's going to get up faster but your average lakes that are 20 plus feet deep you know and take longer to or spring fed or anything like that they're not going to spawn until around Memorial Day. So, um, again, that's up here, like Don, where, kind of where you live and, and where I live. Now, downstate, it'll be different. I, every time I talk about fish, you guys, or, or seasons or anything, you got to remember where I live. I live in Alcona County, Michigan. Now, if I say that the fish are going to be biting at a certain time, and let's say you live four hours south of me, you got to remember that you're going to be ahead of me. So, uh, no matter what, if I talk about a season, you guys are always going to be ahead of me, whether it's fish, mushrooms, anything, the rut, <laughs> I mean, you name it, you guys are going to be ahead of me with things. So ash trees, yep, ash trees are good too. Downstate should be any day now. Oh, for the mushrooms, I'm guessing. <clears throat> Yeah, now, uh, again, guys, I mentioned this earlier tonight, and I'll show you now what I'm going to do. You're back again, but you're not coming back up. You're not. Um, I'm going to do three auctions. What I'm auctioning off is I've got a bunch of my pounders split up, like the pig pounders. I've got 31 pig pounders, so you got 31 different colors of pig pounders, uh, 32 colors of the panty pounders, and... There is, of the 2.0s, we got 28 colors of the 2.0s. So I'm going to be auctioning these off here in about 10 minutes. And uh, all the money from tonight proceeds go into fixing the truck. Now, my idea behind this is, okay, when, when I get the truck fixed, 
I'm going to start camping ASAP. All I was waiting for was 50 degree temps, which downstate is going to have 50 degrees for a while. So I've been watching and I want to start getting my lures downstate anyway. So um, as far as that goes, I'm probably going to start traveling to get my lures into other bait shops. And what that'll allow me to do is I can make money as I travel. And that way I've got money for traveling, money making baits and I can just keep going that way. So I would like to get out. I, I made a message on Facebook yesterday. I wanted to get ideas of people's favorite tackle shops throughout the state. And uh, people were messaging me, commenting and stuff, sending me their favorites, which was great. And what I do is I mark them all on my map. Um, you guys, I got to show you my map. I have been marking down all these tackle shops that people have been sending me along with, you guys know, if you've been following me long enough, you know that I've uh, been um, that I use the Sportsman's Connection fishing books. Okay, I use those to find lakes in Michigan, and I research the heck out of them. Uh, stocking data, um, net trapping data, stuff like that. I, I research them to try and figure out what is in them and all that other good stuff. Now, what I did is, if I can get this thing to uh, all those flags are locations that I need to check for shops. Now, the blue dot square things are fishing locations that I plan to hit. So what I did is I marked down um, bait shops, and then I'd mark fishing spots all around these bait shops. That way, me and the dogs can take off, go out, camp at a spot somewhere around these lakes, and we can tackle two, three lakes in a weekend or something and also get ourselves into some new shops while we're at it. So it should be should be a good time. I, I still don't think so, Don. I think um, as far as the spawn goes, it's still going to be a little bit down there. Um, I'd say a couple weeks anyway. You know, again, if it's shallower waters, yeah, they're going to spawn quicker because water temps warm up faster. But I, yeah, Lisa, I didn't look. You pro Do you have them in your shop? The sportsman's connections are great. I own it. I own one for every part of Michigan, and I own one from Wisconsin. I even have the two UP books. Hesperia Sport Shop. All right, I'll have to look that one up, Brad. Thank you. Fresh night crawl. You'd be shocked, though, Kevin. You would really be shocked. These plastics, in my opinion, they work better than a crawler. Plus. You know, you throw a crawler out there, you're going to be going through them like crazy, whereas these plastics, you could catch a pile of fish on before you actually lose it or get it torn up. I'm going to be honest with you, Dave. I think you could go to all classic smelt dipping places, like let's say the, the Tawas State Dock or the main Tawas Dock down in the middle of town there, that short one, or uh, even the mouth of the Tawas River, um, Sturgeon Point possibly. Any of the classic smelt spots, I bet you you could go there now and get smelt. People haven't been out doing it. They don't realize that the smelts are coming back, but they are. So I do have traveling to do, and that's why I need to get the dang truck. I, I just need it to be reliable. That's all I need. I am sick and tired of not having a reliable vehicle. I have put so much money in the van and then now this truck. It's It's stupid. I just need a good vehicle so that I can... So that I can get my butt out there and do what I got to do. <laughs> I don't. But you know what, Lisa? I think I am going to start making a uh, panty harness. I'm going to come out with my own panty harness for worms. Because I was talking to Rick about that today. That will help you tackle shops out there that, that need to sell worms too. And uh, obviously they'll be cheaper too because they won't have the plastic on them. So um probably sell them for like two bucks a piece. But I'm going to, as soon as I can come up with the money to buy the labels for those, I'm going to make a panty harness, probably an orange and chartreuse and chrome to start with. And yeah, that's going to be something I'm going to do. That way people, the shops can start selling worms. See, the only thing that sucks, Brad, is, is anywhere that I go for these shops, I have to I have to be in a spot to fish with my boat with my dogs because otherwise the dogs have to stay in the truck and I can't do that. <laughs> so, I mean, no, I have, that's the problem with being single and being alone all the time. I have nobody to watch the dogs ever. So if I go a trip anywhere, they have to come with me and I have to plan that whole day with them and around them. So 
it really, you know, throws a wrench in the works, but that's how it's got to go. So it, probably no steelhead fishing or no trout fishing or anything like that for me, but not for the entire state. I bought one for every part, like they've got them split up for the whole state, you know, in sections, but I bought one for every part of the state. Yeah, they do, Kevin. They work really good with the worms they come with. I, I promise you that. I would not use these worms if I didn't think they were good and if I didn't know they were good. I use them in the videos. You've seen them a million times. The, the cool thing about these worms, they are so soft, yet reliable. They don't tear easy, but they're so soft that that blade makes them whip like crazy, and it looks, to me, even better than a live worm. Sometimes your live worm doesn't do nothing but drag behind your hook. But these things here, they will wiggle the whole time that your blade's going. So, yeah, it's really nice. They work good. Grand River Bait and Tackle. I'm not sure. I'll write that down, though, just to check. Um, probably not, just because it's in Lansing, like in the city. Because I need places I can camp with my dogs and not worry about a million people or them getting run over or anything like that. But I will look into it because if anything, I could check it out and uh, and then go camp somewhere else. Lakeside Fishing, St. Clair Shores. I don't think I had that one. I did have a couple down that way, though. Um, people last night on my Facebook were telling me about some places down that way. Yeah, I get it. I catch my own crawlers too when I cuz they're just they cost too much anymore, but I you know, I it took me a while cuz I get it. You have to have faith in what you use. Otherwise, you just, you know, if you don't have faith, you might only make a few casts and then be like, "Oh, this ain't going to work and switch over to something else." But if you do have faith, then you'll continue to cast cuz you know it's going to connect when you get in front of something. But I'm telling you, if you ever do try um, like a legit try, you will be shocked at how well they work. I have not only outfished people that are using live bait way more times than I can count, but uh, again, you can catch so many more fish on one of these than you would on a worm. So, yeah. No, I. Um, I mean, I need to go. I. I I'm, I'll be up north too. I'm trying to plan my. I'm trying to plan all the camping things around the weather. Like the UP, I will be up there too, but I want to wait until, again, temps. I need temps to be around 50s so that I'm not freezing to death. It doesn't. I don't care about it at night. I've got the dogs to keep me warm, but it'd be nice if daytime temps from the 50s. So as soon as the UP starts warming up, then I will head that way too. There's only like three tackle shops in the UP though. I've been up there and I've looked at them all. I've gotten lake effect into them all, so... I know where they're at, but there's not very many up there. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, they do. They work really good. I've tried with Frank's. Um, I have. I've tried. I, I don't know why. I think it's because I don't have the uh, scan codes on my stuff. Maybe they're just too lazy to, to make them. I don't know. But I have been told from a couple shops that if I were to take my stuff into Northwoods, they would buy they would buy all my stuff. The only problem is they would want an even bigger discount than the other shops. And I really don't like that. So I don't know. Do if I was in a pickle and I needed to sell all my stuff for some reason, then I could do that. But yeah, Northwoods is kinda I haven't quite made that that jump yet. It sure would, Don. Yeah, it sure would. Master Angler Pike would it would actually take up that whole strip right there. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> Hope you're doing good. I've probably got most of them down, Barry, because I do have, I mean, I, I'm sure I've got 100 tackle shops now. I'm probably set as far as tackle shops go uh, for, for the state because I, I can only get myself into so many. But, yeah, mom and pop shops, yep. But at the same time, i got to make monies too. So i got to get into shops that, that can push my stuff. So. Yeah, thank you, sis. That's true. Yep, word of mouth helps. So if you guys ever go into your tackle shops, you know, and bring me up, say, hey, you know, if you guys went in and, and uh, 
just said, hey, LT Outdoors Tackle is really cool. You should look at getting them in. That would be awesome because that would just give me that extra step to where when I go to that shop and talk to them, I got a better chance of getting in there. So, oh, God. <laughs> That's awesome, Paul. Robin must know what you're talking about. That is that. That's excellent. <laughs> no, I gotta outdo them now. I gotta make something even goofier than that. I guess. <clears throat> yep, fish and tackle grab bag. I got that one wrote down. Yep. Fish the ramp for perch. Not sure where you're talking there, Keith. Hey, Branson. I do have an online shop. Yes, I do, Branson. I will share that right now so that you can see what it is. Um, I've also got... Uh, I've also got um, a lot of merchandise. In fact, in the next few days, you guys are going to see that... A clown color, that would be good. Um, you guys are going to see that I'll have a, uh, I've got a new hoodie that I made up because people are kind of making me out to be like this mythical creature up here. I guess there's been arguments over people seeing me that say they know me and some people are saying, oh, you don't know him and this and that. Well, I made a shirt up with me as Sasquatch and it says, have you seen LT? So if you guys want to see a funny hoodie, check it out. It's on my website. So. I've heard the grab bag's cool. I haven't checked that one out yet, but nope, I'm in I'm not in Atlanta hardware, Lisa. I somebody told me though that I should check them out. So if you think I should do that, then I will. Um yeah, somebody this morning actually mentioned Atlanta hardware. Jay's Marina and Port Huron. Okay. I like that idea because that, that's a good area too, so. You're welcome, Branson. I hope you enjoy the, the website. I've got a lot of good stuff on there. So, handicap ramp at the dam. Oh, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Thank you. No, and, uh, I have not been down there lately. Um, I, honestly, it seems like the it seems like the uh, the water's probably been too cold. I had a friend that was down there the other day, uh, yesterday actually, and he said that there was nothing down there yet. When the fish are in down there, you can actually see them. The perch will be, and, and don't think it's just at that dam. It's, it's at all the dams. When the perch are in, you can get them at any dam. But they'll be lined up along the rocks because that's where they're going to spawn. Um, perch, if you did not know this, they don't need to make, they, they don't make beds. They're not like a bluegill. They're not going to fan, or a bass. They're not going to fan their tail and make a nice little pretty bed and lay their eggs. They don't do that. They just spit their eggs out. Males put their semen on it the whole nine. That's it. All right, it's uh, if you're ever out and you see, let's say you go along some seaweed and you see some weird curled up, they look like frog eggs, but they're in weird curlies. That's perch eggs. All right, they uh, it's it's a whole different ball game when they spawn. So, thank you, Dave. Yeah, if you guys haven't already, please hit that thumbs up. I see I only got 27 of you, and I had at one point I had 70 people watching, so I appreciate that. Oh, I know. I don't either, Kevin. Yep, I don't get it either because that's, to me, crawler harnesses are the way to go for cats. And that's something I want to do this week. I'm trying to get Rick into it because that's, it's perfect. This is the best time of year to be on the Saginaw River for kitties. And I really want to get down there and do that this week. So, yeah, I'm hoping if anything, Thor, get off of there. If anything, I'm hoping to, to get my boat down there. But I got to do what I got to do. I got to get down there. So, hardware store in Lewiston. All right, appreciate that, Dan. I think that's where uh, I think that's where Don gets his bait. So now it's funny, Kevin. You mentioned that though about the harnesses because I told Rick the other day I thought about making some catfish special catfish harnesses out of. I did get some fifty pound test that I thought about making special catfish harnesses out of. So we shall see. It's, it all depends on if I can ever come up with the money for tags and all that other stuff. So. Um, it is 834, so I better get these auctions done so that we can chat some more. Um, I'll start things off here with the 2.0s. We'll get these out of the way. Like I said, there is 28 of these 2.0s, you guys. Actually, Barry, that's funny you say that because um, Rick put that on today. So 
should be good, hopefully. It, it looked good, and I appreciate you giving that. Hey there, Jen. <laughs> I know, it's been a while. How you doing? I'm definitely, it's something I want to make, Neil. Something I want to make. All right, guys, right now there are 28 2.0s. This is 28 different colors of the 2.0. Um, I'm doing pretty good, Jen. Trucks give me issues again, so tonight I am raising money to fix the dang truck so that hopefully I can get my butt back fishing because it's been a really slow going week for me and I need content. I am losing my mind. Um, 28 of the 2.0s right now, you guys. Um, all different colors on there. So thank you, Johnny. We are at 30 bucks right now. $30, guys. 30 bucks. Hey, Dave, 50 bucks. Dave comes in at 50. We're at 50 bucks. He barely beat you there, Rick. We're at $50 right now, guys. 50 bucks. That's uh, all these. You get 28 colors. There's a mix. You got gold and chrome colors in here. Uh, Jim comes in at 60. We're at 60. I do want to mention, too, that these are made with 20 pound test. And so are the new regular pig pounders. I've jumped everything up from last year to make them all that much better. So uh, it's 20 pound Berkeley big game, which is also more abrasion resistant. So these things are really good for pike and everything else. Um, we're at $60 right now, guys. 60 bucks for 28 of the 2.0s. 28 of these 2.0s in all these good colors. Um, they got glow beads. Every one of them's got glow beads on them. They got a weighted bead. The whole nine. These are excellent for casting out and reeling in. You could slow troll with them for, for walleyes. Uh, they're pretty much good for everything. Hey there, Dan. 65 right now. Dan comes in at 65. 70. Dave's at 70. <laughs> 70 bucks. 70 bucks, guys. We're at $70. 28 of the 2.0s for 70 bucks. That's a good deal. That's uh, the value on these is just under a hundred dollars. So we're at seventy bucks, guys. Seventy bucks for these two point oh's right here. Twenty eight two point oh's, and uh, I appreciate everybody. I want to do. I do want to mention here real quick that I have these in a shop right now. The only shop and out in a shop. Um, I'm not looking to get them into a bunch of shops just yet because I got to keep up with the plastics. But Lisa Ferguson right there at A1 Woods and Water. If you check her out in Hillman. She does have pig pounders. She's got the 2.0s in, so check them out. Um, Dave's at 70. I'm going to let it go for just another 10 seconds. 10 seconds on the clock, guys. 70 bucks. Five, four, three, two, 75. Dan's at 75. 75, guys. Barely got in there, Dan. You, you got me before I clicked it. <laughs> 80. Dave's at 80. 80 bucks. 80 bucks. You guys have seen that these work good. There's split tails in here. There's also paddle tails. Um, these things are epic for bass and everything else. Big pan fish too. So um, 80 bucks right now, guys. We're at $80. Gemma's sitting here with her head on my, my lap. We're at 80 bucks, guys. 85. 85 bucks. <clears throat> Dave and Dan are at it. 85 right now, you guys. 85. Like I said, I appreciate everybody tonight bidding because, again, this goes to fixing the truck. I have an appointment Wednesday to get it fixed, and I'm hoping I can get it fixed and reliable so that I can start getting my butt out there. Because, as you see, and I'm running out of content. <laughs> the video from Saturday was from the fall, so I'm I'm really running low. We're at 85 right now, guys. 85, 85 bucks. I'm gonna let it go for just another 20 seconds here. Dan Whitford's got it at 85. 85 bucks. That's for 28 2.0s. All right. 10 seconds. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, 95. Dang, Dave. <laughs> he comes in. You guys are right on the clock today. 95. We're at 95 right now. 95 bucks, you guys. 95. 95. Gemma must like it. She got her tail going. $95 right now, you guys. 95 bucks for the 28 2.0s. Appreciate that, Dave. Thank you much. Like I said, hopefully this week I can start getting out and doing some damage on the fish. $95.
Just going to let it go for another 10 seconds. All right. Five, four, three, two. You got him, Dave. <laughs> Thank you much, Dave. Oh. Yeah, I'd like to. Like I said, I got to. Working on the truck, man. I got to get her going. It's definitely that time of year, though. Congratulations, Dave. Thank you much, brother. <laughs> All right, guys. Next up on the chopping block here, I will do the pig pounders, the original pig pounders, which these ones here, Again, I've been tying them all new this year with 20-pound Berkeley Big Game, which is abrasion-resistant and a lot more abrasion-resistant than anything I've been using. So uh, for the pig pounders, there are 31 of these, so there is more of these than there was the 2.0. So we got 31 different colors here of the pig pounders, guys. And again, it's got glow beads um, and weighted beads and all the good stuff on there. Um, there's even, you know, some of the website exclusive colors but again we've got 31 pig pounders rick's in at 35 we're at 35 dollars guys 35 dollars for the 31 pig pounders rick's at 35 right now 35 bucks guys 35 dollars that's 31 pig pounders and again these work for all species you've seen me catch a lot of big fish on them jim's at 40 40 bucks 40 bucks guys 40 dollars uh, these work great for trout, too. For any of you that like to trout fish, you've seen me use uh, the pig pounders and the panty pounders are great for trout. The panty pounders I really like for brook trout. They are just excellent brook trout. Uh, but these here are great for browns. Um, 40 bucks. We're at 40 bucks right now. Jim is at 40 bucks. 45. Rick's at 45. One pig pounders. 45 bucks, guys. 45. It's a $93 value. <laughs> We're at 45 right now, guys. 45 bucks. You get all these 31 pig pounders. We are 45 bucks. 50. Dang comes in at 50. We're at 50 bucks right now, guys. $50. 50 bucks for the pig pounders. All these different colors. <clears throat> I see I got 63 of you watching. If you haven't already hit that thumbs up, I appreciate it. And as soon as I get done with these sales here, uh, we can get back to questions and answers if you guys have any good outdoorsy questions for me um, but if you haven't already please hit that thumbs up i appreciate it dan's at 50 right now 55 rick's at 55 <laughs> thanks barry 55 right now guys 55 bucks my favorite color honestly out of all these would just be the white i don't know why but white for me is the best color i would say white pink and then the natural color those are my three top three favorites but yeah the, and they're all in there so yeah but my favorite's definitely the white um 55 bucks right now guys we are at 55 in fact the white i think you can see it sticking up right there <laughs> 55 dollars, guys actually that's wonder bread i can see it joe comes in at 60 we're at 60 right now 60 bucks 60 dollars Is this Joe from Curtisville area? Yeah, my favorite is definitely the white. Wonder Bread's obviously a good color, but uh, but yeah, the pink and pink and regular white are probably my couple favorites in there. So. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't. Sorry about that, Joe. We're at 60 bucks right now. 60 bucks. I was going to say the other Joe I can't have uh, auctioning right now. Um, $60. 60 bucks right now, guys. 60 bucks. Yeah, it just shows his Joe. So I was like, crap. <laughs> I 
Joe comes in at 60, 60 bucks. Now, if you win these, Joe, I would like to hear how these work down there because I know you're in a whole different state and I'm sure they would work great down your way. So um, we're at $60. Joe's at 60 bucks right now, guys, 60 bucks. I'm going to let it go for just another 20 seconds, 20 seconds, guys, $60. 60 bucks gets you the 31 pig pounders here. $60. Again, I appreciate everybody tonight because it's it's all going to help me with the truck. So, Oh, dude, I would love that, Joe. I would love to see that. Absolutely. That would be excellent. <laughs> all right. Five, four, three. Two. You got him, Joe. There he is, buddy. And send me pictures because I would love to see work on those sea trout. I love sea trout as it is. It's a dream of mine to get down there and get into some, but um, I, I would definitely love to uh, to see the pictures of you catching them. So. In fact, I might... I might just throw in some 2.0s to send you to, just because I'd like to see that down there. That would really help me out. Yeah, the sea trout, sea trout, and uh, uh, snook, and um, what's the other one down there. I think they would all love these things, man. And it's a dream of mine to get down there and fish with them myself. Because I think they would just be really cool to try down there. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you know, it's because I've already had them going for, you know, this is the second year. So, or third year. Because I started with the Panty Pounders last year was Pig Pounders. So, yeah, this is my third year going at it. So, yeah, keep it up, man. Flou yeah, Redfish is the one I was thinking of, but Flounder would be cool too. Yeah, back then, Robin used my bottle caps. Um, she used them in the one, I think it was a pond. I seen you guys get some bass. That was pretty cool. But yeah, if you can get some cool fish on them, Joe, definitely send me pictures. I'd love that. All right, next one up, guys. This will be the auction of the night um, is the Panty Pounders. This one has one extra than the pig. There are 32 colors in this one. So 32 colors of the Panty Pounder in here. Again, these ones, now these are made with 10-pound tests. These are made for panfish, so I don't make them as heavy-duty as I do for the other ones. But this is for panfish. You're talking bluegill, crappie, perch, blue, um, sunfish, rock bass, stuff like that. Uh, 50 bucks. Neil comes in at 50. 50 bucks. Um, they, they work awesome for everything, though. And as I said, brook trout, it's probably my favorite brook trout lure anymore. So um, Neil's in at 50. Bill's at 55. 55 bucks. Bill's at 55 right now, 55 bucks, guys. All different colors in there, lots of good colors. We're at $55 right now. <clears throat> 55 bucks. I do want to say I'm glad my internet's holding up because it's been going out on me a lot. I've had the guy work on it all week. It's driving me insane. So I'm glad that things are going good tonight. <laughs> it's been stressful, but. 55 bucks right now. Bill's at 55. 55 bucks for the 32 panty pounders, guys. 32 panty pounders. $80 value. Good deal. 65. Neil comes in at 65. We're at 65 bucks right now. 65. 65 bucks, guys. 65 for all these panty pounders. That'll catch you a ton of fish. And you know, it's funny. If people ask me what my favorite colors are, and yes, I have a few of them, but I will tell you this, every single color that I make works, all of them. I wouldn't make these colors if they didn't. And I've used all these colors, and I love them all. That's why I don't get rid of them. Um, I did get rid of one color last year, but other than that, all these other colors are really great. So they all have their own situations. But 65 right now, we're at $65. Neil, Neil's got her 65. I'm going to just let her go for another 20 seconds here, guys. 20 seconds on the clock. Neil's at $65. And again, I want to appreciate everybody for auctioning on this tonight because, again, that helps me with the truck. So I appreciate that. Um, $65. Bucks. For brook trout, 
probably the pink. I, I did, I mean, white worked awesome because it's, I mean, my favorite color. But last year I used pink and that something about that was really working great on them. So um, they didn't give me an estimate, but I looked online and it said that the average cost for that kind of stuff was around four or $500. So yeah, it's going to be rough. I did come up, I made a sale the other day at a store. So um, I have extra money on the side, so it, I wasn't only counting on this tonight, but I should have enough. Uh, I'm hopeful anyway, so. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, everything got stupid expensive, Joe. You got them, Neil. Heck of a deal there, buddy. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what it is anymore, but the prices on everything get sky high. That's why when it comes to um, brakes and, and rotors and stuff like that, I, I try to fix it all myself because it is it is really ridiculous. I understand that it takes some knowledge, but at the same time, there's no point in hurting people, you know, ripping people's pockets like that. So right now it's the back wheel bearings, Brandon. There's also still a leak in the gas tank, which that's not bothering me as much as the bearings. The bearings are really messing the truck up. If you've had bad bearings, you know what it does. I've had them several times in different vehicles. And yeah, it, right now it's at the point where it's, you know, every now and then it kind of jerks, but it's also growling a lot. And Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Mark just gave me a $50 donation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, it all it's all going into fixing the stupid truck because I need it to be I need it reliable. That's all I care about. If the thing is if the thing can get me from point A to point B without breaking down all the time, then I can be happy. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> hey, that's not, that's a good idea, Neil. I get it, man. Yep. I'm, I've got myself a good system going here as far as hanging them on the pegs and everything. It was getting tiresome for me because I used to rubber band them all up, you know, like that. And I would have them in bins. But, you know, Rick made me these these nice boards here and it's working out a lot really good for that. But uh, as far as the camping goes, when I am able to camp, guys, like in temperatures, I've been watching... I'd really like to get down to the Waterloo Rec area because I know a lot of the lakes down that way. So I'm hoping to get down there. It's probably going to be one of the first places I'm going to camp in with my dogs and my boat. I'll just be fishing all day, sleeping, fishing, sleeping. That's it with the dogs. But that's my plan is to go down there, hit a few lakes. I want to get into my uh, Master Angler Red Ears and we don't, for any of you, and I, I've heard it time and time again, we do not have red ears up here, okay? Uh, if you catch a pumpkin seed, they have a red fleck on their gill thing there, and that's not a red ear. Totally different fish. Um, a red ear, for those of you that didn't know, is actually what they call a shell cracker down south. And that is down, it's a southern fish. That's why we can't really have them up north. There is a couple lakes they've tried to put them in. I think they did do well in one lake, but other than that, it's just downstate. They need a certain temperature to do good in, and we don't have it up here. So uh, it's the southern lakes that you got to get them in, and, and luckily we do have them down south. Jackson area has a lot of red ears. Um, you've never caught one in Ohio? Wow. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Kevin, if you want to get into them, uh, look into some of the lakes in, in uh, Jackson area, um, Washtenaw County. Uh, there's a, and I'm talking a bunch of lakes, not just a couple that's been stocked. There's a lot of lakes down that way that have red ears and they are a very cool fish. They get big. I wouldn't, you know, let's say an eight inch bluegill to me is a good eater. I wouldn't touch an eight inch red ear because they get way better than that. <laughs> they are awesome fish. So Yeah, well, that and it was sitting in a barn for a while, John. That's that's been main. That's been the main problem. Is it's after sitting so long, a lot of the stuff's just seizing up. Um, my Venmo, Dave, is just uh, that's all it is. 
Yep, Venmo's that. Cash App is that with the cash number in front of it. <laughs> I try to keep everything pretty simple. But that's my plan. Like I said, I am uh, planning different areas. I've even got um, spots over by Grand Rapids, um, obviously like Lake St. Helen area, Houghton Lake. Um, what's the name of the one? There's a big lake, starts with an M. I really want to hit. It's supposed to be good for panfish. I also have some lakes marked off for, for musky. I know there's some of you musky guys on here, like my buddy Mike, that you know swears by Lake St. Hel uh, Lake St. Clair and that and Detroit River and stuff, but I have been marking down and researching a bunch of smaller inland lakes that are down that way um, that seem like they're really good for them. So, and I don't even care if I get into, you know, 50 plus inch muskie. I, I don't care. If I could get a 30, I would be pumped. Same sturgeon. If I could get a small sturgeon, I'd be happy. But as far as the muskies go, there are some lakes down that way that I have wrote down in my book that are supposed to be just killer for muskies. So, yep, I've been writing down a lot of stuff. I have a whole, all my books have things marked in them right now. So, I will say this, Brandon, the older vehicles are better to work on. I will say that. They're easier to get to as far as most of the stuff goes. They don't have all the crazy electronics that a lot of the things do. So, usually when something does break down, it's easier to fix. Now, I could fix the wheel bearings myself, but I'm going to say this. I get scared when I do it because when me and Uncle Tom fixed it on the van the one time, you got to be careful when you're – we had to beat on that thing for hours to get it out. It was so froze up. And when we did get that thing out there, um, it, it ended up knocking the uh, – oh, what the heck's that called? The drive shaft. We messed up the drive shaft doing that, so – Oh, they do, yeah. They, not only do they taste good, Kevin, but they are just a lot of fun to, to catch. Just think of a pumpkin seed that gets bigger. You know, like the, these fish, It's I've, I've caught a lot of 11-inch red ears. They, they get big. So I don't think it was, Mike. That one doesn't sound familiar. No, I don't think so. Um... For bass, yes, John, because there is an actual season open right now for bass statewide. They opened it up several years ago, and it's called the catch and release season. Now, you can't do that. There is no catch and release season for pike, so you can't go out and just target pike right now. I can't buy a bunch of chub minnows, go out with a bucket, and start targeting pike. You can't do that. But as far as bass go, they did open up a catch and immediate release um, season where, yes, you can catch them, you can measure them up real fast and throw them back. You're allowed to do that. So, yes, if I caught, I could go out bass fishing right now and catch master angler bass all, all I want, and it's open. So, not to mention you can go and fish them on the Great Lakes. You can keep pike out there if you wanted. What fish are you talking about there, Jim? Yeah, there are accidental catches, but yeah, you're not supposed to target. You, you cannot target. Pike, walleye, if something is closed, you can't target them. But if you look in the book, there is catch and release season open for bass year round. It never used to be that way, trust me. For years, it wasn't. But they opened it that way. That way, the bass tournament guys could get going earlier in the year rather than waiting after Memorial Day. So, um, yeah, it, bass catch and release season is open year, year round. So. No, you can't pick what bites the hook, but you can target. You know, if I'm out fishing a chub under a bobber, it's obvious that I'm not perch fishing. Um, I before I I only got a minute, so before I get off of here, guys, I do want to show you this real quick. I pulled this up here just to show you because speaking of master angler, this is what they looked like back in 2006. I think it was. They've come a long way. Okay, they didn't even have a year on it back then. This was first sheephead and they didn't have a year on it. Now, I didn't start getting into them again until 2017, and uh, 
that was when I first started getting back into it. Look at the big change in 2017. I mean, they got they got really cool with them after that. So you got 2017. Um, I brought all of them up here just to show you guys. This was 2018. This was 2019. In my opinion, this was one of the coolest ones they came out with because they added rocks and seaweed. I thought that was really neat. Um, after 2019, they went into the uh, bluegill, which I thought was beautiful. They did good work on the color. This year is going to be the pumpkin seed sunfish, which looks outstanding. I can't wait to get that in the mail. It, it should be coming any day now. Um, 2021 was the crappie, which that... That turned out pretty cool. I've got a couple of them. Um, 2022 was the salmon, Atlantic salmon there. Um, I got a bunch of those ones. And 2023 was the brookie. So um, I've got, or the brown, sorry guys. Um, but I've got, uh, yeah, I've got all those. And then this year is going to be the pumpkin seed. So I'm really excited. It's going to be a fun thing. I like, that's my favorite thing about master anglers is seeing what, species they choose every year so it should be pretty cool but um i hope you guys have a good night i'm hopping off um again thank you everybody i appreciate y'all getting on tonight i appreciate the help for the truck getting fixed so that i can get out and do my thing and uh how do you get the master awards ian that is very easy i will answer that real quick because i feel it's important um for the master angler awards you go on the dnr mdnr website Look up, you can even type in Master Angler on Google, Michigan Master Angler, and it'll pull you right up to that website. But they have a form you have to fill out. You have to take a clear photo of your fish measured. It has to be a clear, good measurement of the fish. Um, and they have all the measurement numbers in the book so that you can look at it. And let's say, for instance, rock bass is up to 12 inches, right? Uh, bluegill is 10 inches. So you got all these fish on there. You have to catch them those certain sizes. You take the picture. You, you email that with the form that's on the website to the DNR. The form is easy. It just basically asks what you caught it on, what time of day, blah, 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 all that stuff. But you send it into the DNR, and then usually within a couple months, you get your patches. So it's well worth it. They're free. It's I think everybody in the state should take advantage of this because you know as well as I do, the state don't give anything out for free. So I think as sportsmen, we put the money into it. We need to get what, what's coming to us. So if you catch a big fish, get your master anglers. All right, guys, I'm off for the night. I got to get the truck fixed this week. Have a good week. I will chat with you next weekend.